Hi there, this is IELTS Master Lee, and this video lesson is on IELTS vocabulary for academic reading. And today's theme is crop growing skyscrapers. All right, let's get started. So let's talk first about using IELTS reading tests for vocabulary study. IELTS reading tests or sample tests are excellent for vocabulary study and for grammar. Nearly every paragraph in a reading test has a lot of high-level words, collocations, set phrases, synonyms, and more. They're great, all right? You can use your previous reading tests to improve your academic vocabulary tremendously. So reading tests are not just for testing yourself. After you're finished with the test, you should use these tests and grab everything you can from them. All of the vocabulary, all of the grammar, everything. But today we're going to focus on vocabulary from these. And you can be sure that this vocabulary is useful for the IELTS because it's already on a sample test. So it's definitely useful for the IELTS. And in this lesson, we're going to take a look at just one paragraph from an IELTS sample test and analyze some of the great vocabulary from it. All right, let's get started. So this paragraph is from the IELTS 11 book published by Cambridge University Press, which is a great book, and I'll link to it down in the description. Let me read this paragraph first. By the year 2050, nearly 80% of the Earth's population will live in urban centers. Applying the most conservative estimates to current demographic trends, the human population will increase by about 3 billion people by then. An estimated 109 hectares of new land, about 20% larger than Brazil, will be needed to grow enough food to feed them if traditional farming methods continue as they are practiced today. At present, throughout the world, over 80% of the land that is suitable for raising crops is in use. Historically, some 15% of that has been laid waste by poor management practices. What can be done to ensure enough food for the world's population to live on? All right, so this is the paragraph that we're going to look at for some vocabulary. This is just one paragraph from test one in this IELTS 11 book. Let's look at some of the vocabulary that I've highlighted from this one paragraph. Okay, in the purple, here we have the vocabulary that I've highlighted. So first is population. Now, most of you probably know this word, but population is the amount of people that live in a particular place. So the Earth's population are the, is the number of people, the amount of people that live on the Earth. Next, we have urban centers. What's urban mean? Well, urban is related to a city. Okay, so a city center. You can think tall buildings, lots of businesses, a city center, urban centers. Next, number three, conservative estimates. Okay, first, what does estimates mean? Do you know? Estimate is a guess. In this case, a guess about how much the human population will increase by. And so an estimate is a guess and conservative. When you have a conservative estimate, it means you're not exaggerating. It's not a big estimate. It's at minimum the smallest possible or the most reasonable, not a crazy one, but the most reasonable estimate. So that's number three. Next, we have demographic trends. Okay, demographic is related to population and the kinds of people that live in a place. Demographic. And a trend is how something changes over time. So demographic trends is related to how people will change over time. Next, we have number five, hectares. You can probably understand from reading this sentence, but a hectare is a way to measure how big the land is, how much land there is. So 109 hectares is a measurement of the size of the land. Next, number six, at present. Now this doesn't seem too difficult, but this is a nice phrase. Maybe you can use it in your writing. At present means now. <laughs> now, 
nowadays in the current time, right? Number seven, is suitable for, is suitable for. Notice I didn't just highlight suitable because is suitable for is a nice expression and you want to memorize these together if you can. So suitable only is okay to remember, but is suitable for is more useful because you know which words suitable collocates with, which words it comes together with most often. So suitable means it's good or it's okay for. In this case, the land is suitable for raising crops. It's okay to raise crops on this land. It's reasonable to do it on this land. Number eight, raising crops. Okay, this is raising. We're using raising instead of growing crops here. Growing crops is also okay. That's also a common collocation, but maybe they wanted to use something different because they used grow two sentences ago, and so they're using raising crops here. Next, number nine is some 15%. This usage of some is quite interesting. Here, some doesn't mean a few. Here, some means about. And so using some with a number after it means about. So about 15%, approximately 15%. And number 10, has been laid waste by. Okay, or you could say laid waste by. It's okay to remember that too. To lay waste by is probably to be destroyed by, to be destroyed by, or to be damaged by, okay? And then what is it damaged by? Well, it's damaged by poor management practices. These are just, this is just a nice collocation, poor management practices, these words that go together. Poor practices can go together, and what kind of poor practices? Poor management practices. Practice in this case isn't like practicing a sport, Practice here and for practices is kind of what you do. So they have bad ways of doing management. And number 11, to ensure. Ensure is a nicer, more academic way to say to make sure, which is more common in conversation. And then last, we have live on. Live on means to continue living. Well, 12 really great words and phrases just from one paragraph. Imagine how many you can get if you look at the whole reading test article. A whole lot of great vocabulary, great expressions, great collocations, lots of stuff. So how many of these words or phrases do you know? And most importantly, did you write down the ones that you don't know? Are you going to remember them or are you going to forget them right after this video? I want you to remember them, okay? Next, just to review, we have population, urban centers, conservative estimates, demographic trends, hectares, at present, is suitable for, raising crops, some 15%, has been laid waste by, poor management practices, ensure, and live on. Reading the words once, listening to the words once is not enough. You need to practice, you need to review. That's why we're going over them again. So vocabulary words are one thing that you can look at, but let's look at vocabulary and cohesion. We're not looking for new words, we're looking for how the words are used to improve cohesion, to improve how the sentences are linked together. So first, number one in the orange, we have by the year 2050 and at present, which is on the one, two, three, four, fifth line. What are these? These are time markers, okay? The first one is by the year 2050, and later on is at present. It makes it very clear that we're changing the time in this paragraph. This is very helpful for your reading and for your writing, and for your listening, and even for your speaking, but definitely for your reading and writing. Next, we have number two. Earth's population, human population, and world's population. These are synonyms, and what a great way to use synonyms here. Instead of using Earth's population three times, they're using a different word in the beginning. Notice they're not changing population. Population is population is population. It's always population. We don't need to change every word when we're writing or expect every word to be changed for reading. But 
they're changing the first part. And so this synonym usage makes this paragraph much better for cohesion. You should try to do this in your writing as well. Number three, by then, them, they, of that. These are all referencing or references. So they're going to something before. For example, the first one, by then. When is by then? Well, it means by the year 2050. Or them. Who is them? Well, I think this means three billion people, which is in the last sentence. Or they, or of that. Of that is 80% of the land. So it's very interesting how they're using referencing here to go back to previous sentences sometimes, but this helps link the paragraph together. In your own writing, you should try to do this sometimes as well. And then last, number four, grow enough food, traditional farming methods, practiced, and raising crops. Here it's vocabulary group. This is quite interesting as well because they're using very similar words. So we have grow enough food, traditional farming methods practiced, and raising crops. You know, these are different. They have different meanings. They're not synonyms, but they're very closely related. Farming, crops, growing food. These are all part of the same category. And so it really helps this paragraph feel complete and feel linked. And it definitely improves the cohesion of this paragraph. All right? Fantastic. Before we finish, let's talk about some suggestions for reading test vocabulary practice. How can you use reading tests to practice your vocabulary? First, one idea is to put the words and phrases you don't know onto flashcards. So just a piece of paper or a card, and on one side you can write the sentence, but maybe leave a blank space. So don't write the word or phrase just the sentence on one side. And on the other side is the word or phrase. Okay. For example, if your keyword is other side, you could write the, and then blank, is the word slash phrase. And on the other side, you write other side. Okay. That could be one idea for how to use this. Next, another idea is after reading the paragraph several times, try to rewrite the paragraph by only looking at the vocabulary words or phrases that you've selected. And finally, compare your version with the original to see what's different. This is also a very good way to analyze your vocabulary usage and your gra grammar usage, your grammatical usage. So that's good for this exercise as well. And then last, look up more example sentences using a dictionary or search engine like Google. After that, write your own example sentences. So definitely take a look at a dictionary or search engine first, but after you're done with that, you can write your own example sentences. Okay, so these are some different ways you can practice your vocabulary. Some of these might sound a little bit old or old fashioned to you, but they're very useful. They're what we call tried and true. Many people have used these techniques and they're very useful, that's why people still use them today. So give them a shot. Take a look at a test and see how many vocabulary words or good phrases you can pull from that reading test. Fantastic. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really appreciate it. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can find us at youtube.com slash IELTSmaster or IELTS-master.com. And finally, tell me, what do you want to see next? I'm looking forward to hearing from you in the comments. Have a fantastic day.